Oh, there you are, YouTube. So before we get to the Christmas stuff, my wife and I are going to see Avatar 2, The Way of Water. We're watching it in IMAX. We're really excited to see it. Let's see how it is. We are back from seeing Avatar and I think it was it was great it really in and in, it's a movie that gets better as it's going because I think at the start of it you're like okay I've seen a lot of this stuff before this looks familiar sure it's a little crisper and all of that but you know I, I know this world and no, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's great to be back in that world. But, you know, I was a little bit like, okay, where, where's the new stuff, right? I knew it was coming. And then we get introduced to that new stuff, obviously the water. This is called Avatar, the way of water. And we know James Cameron loves water. So that begins to become an element within the movie. And we get a lot of cool new creatures. We get um, new Navi that we are meeting and they have adapted to their environment differently than uh, the ones that we met in the first film. So their body types are different um, in terms of how, you know, they would interact with water. Um, so that's, that's all very cool to see these new designs come in to the movie. And then, so that's kind of like the middle, we're getting acquainted with uh, this, you know, new water location. And that one very much feels like the first movie. Not, you know, we we have Jake Sully, we have Natiri, but we also have their children. And their children were sort of in this part of the movie, the middle, focusing on them and them getting acquainted with this area of Pandora because, you know, they grew up in the forest and they are becoming friends, you know, not without some headbutting, becoming friends with the locals in this uh, island that they're uh, now living on, right? And we're sort of seeing something similar to what uh, Jake Sully went through with the first film as he's learning to become Navi, essentially, and, you know, join um, join the, the people that he's sort of, like, infiltrating, I guess, um, assimilating to. And then the third part of the movie is like really where the action starts to get very heavy. We did have some action in the, you know, other parts, but it gets very heavy, but very good. So that's the thing with James Cameron. You know, everybody always says never bet against James Cameron. Um, we know he does water well when, you know, we have Titanic, we have The Abyss, uh, loads of other stuff. But then, you know, like his documentaries and stuff. But we also know he could do action very well. And he's doing it so well here. Like a lot of times, like even Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings, but sometimes, sometimes, every once in a while, the two towers, my eyes will glaze over just a little bit. And that doesn't happen here. Like, you are engaged, you are good. And my wife felt this way, too, because she really doesn't like action movies because her eyes glaze over every time. And to me, it'll happen in moments, right? And it wasn't happening here. So, I don't know. It was just great to see him do action again after all these years because it's been so long since the last Avatar came out. So that was really cool to see. And it was wonderful. It was beautiful. Um, made you think sometimes about Titanic because obviously you're seeing crafts on like ships on the water and then they're falling and you know taking on water and things like that so your your mind does go to Titanic every once in a while um, but I think that's fine also Kate Winslet is in this movie uh, she's one of the natives from the islands um, the water area and 
yeah, so your mind does go to Titanic every once in a while, and there's some visuals that happen, and I think maybe he's even maybe winking to the camera, or maybe we are just so aware that it feels like a wink. I don't know. Um, maybe some spoilers here. I guess I've maybe touched on them anyway a little bit, but uh, Sigourney Weaver is back in this movie, and she is playing um, uh, Jake's, Jake and Nateri's adopted daughter. Um, and I don't know, I don't, maybe I won't get too much into that in case you haven't seen it yet, but, but she's back. Okay. She's playing a new character though. Um, <clears throat> I like the, the themes this movie is touching on, you know, James Cameron's an activist and he likes to do that through storytelling. So there's obviously this be good to your environment, you know, save the whales, uh, all of that sort of thing happening. Um, and you know, I think we saw that. With the previous film, he's uh, very environmentally conscious, con conscious, and uh, that happens here uh, as well. And you know, he the previous Avatar movie kind of gets knocked for being very simple in terms of story, but you can call it simple or you can call it archetypal, and I think that's kind of where I see it. Also, he's using extremely new, impressive technologies to create these movies, um, visuals that we haven't seen, um, aliens that we haven't seen. So we're taking in a lot of visual information. So I think it's smart to go to the basics and use archetypes when telling your story. And I think he does that here as well. So we had the hero's journey, right, in the first Avatar. And in this one, we're starting to get Additional, we did get touch on this before, but we're getting additional, uh, like spiritual religious metaphors. Um, like we have a, a strong tie to, um, like Christ and, um, <clears throat> Immaculate Conception and, uh, things like that happening in this movie. Sacrifice, there's also loads of themes on. Uh, uh, parenting, um, motherhood, fatherhood, all of that, family in general, uh, they, they, they do a great job with all of that. This movie had me in tears at the end, like I was crying heavily. Would I have cried as heavily as I did uh, before having kids? I don't know, but it was happening here. Like, I was bawling at the end during the credits, great beautiful credits as well. Um, it was, it was just floods, you know, tears happening. It was a very emotional movie, I think. And yeah, it was touching on a lot of good things and doing so very much in an archetypal manner. So it is very simple storytelling, but I think that is great pairing with the type of visual onslaught that we are getting. So that is nice. And it doesn't feel dumb, I don't think. Um, you know, sim simple to a point to where it's like goofy um, or silly or anything like that. You know, maybe some things here and there feel a little bit dated, uh, but you know, Cameron's movies, you know, he, we, we know his 80s and 90s stuff, right? Uh, we know his 90s stuff, I would say, particularly well. So it's just kind of like, you know, we know his past filmmaking style and it gets brought in to this a little bit. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed it. My wife really enjoyed it. Um, how would I rank it with the other one? I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, it affected me more, a heck of a lot more, but the nostalgia of seeing something I'd never seen before, nothing like it, for the first time, that theater experience watching the original Avatar was like nothing I'd seen before, or you'd seen before, I'm sure, when you watched it. So that has a stronghold on my emotions and memory, so it's kind of hard to say which one I prefer because that experience was so cool, you know? Um, it's kind of like the original Toy Story. I felt the same way with that. You know, I like a, a lot of the sequels, but 
going to the theater seeing something I'd never seen before was amazing. I feel like a lot of people who saw Star Wars the first time in the theater, you know, have, have some um, strong feelings towards that, um, seeing that in the theater. And, you know, maybe A New Hope is always their favorite. So, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, I feel like the character development is stronger here. We have more characters that we're following. Um, Jake and Natiri have quite a few kids that we're following here, which is interesting. It's not just like one or two. They have a few. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, expand that definition of what a family is. Is it just blood or is it not? Is it more than that? So... Uh, those are great themes in here as well. Overall, great movie. Really enjoyed it. Uh, check it out if you haven't yet. I know I'm a little late to the game. Also, we watched it in IMAX, and I don't think they had the high frame rate thing going. And I don't know if the high frame rate is local to my area, so I can't really comment on that because I didn't notice it anyway if we did watch high frame rate. But from what I was looking at online it looks like the IMAX theaters do not do the high frame rate so if you did you watch the high frame rate if you did let me know I want to know what you thought about that because I heard that sort of enhances the 3d the 3d here didn't quite impress me the same way that it did in the first movie and I think that's because most of it was like depth so it was like the screen was the foreground and then it went deep and what I remember what sort of amazed me about the first one is not only did that go deep, but also um, went, you know, towards you, broke broke the screen, right, basically, because I remember shooing things away from me, and I never had a moment like that. It felt very much like it was more the screen was the front, and then it went beyond. But if you watch the high frame rate version, is that different? I'm curious. Um, but yeah, Avatar, The Way of Water, very good movie. So now that I've talked about Avatar, The Way of Water, let's get to the Christmassy stuff. Okay. All right, they're so, gonna dig into these advent calendars. What are you doing first? This. December twentieth. You're, okay. You're gonna start on that side. Yeah. What's in there? Okay. Delayed gratification. I like. It. <gasps> she got. <laughs> what is it? No we It almost looks like a stocking. What is it? And they got some okay. bells, and it know? looks like I'm there so is some off. holly up there. Do you want to eat it? What there you go. Yummy bells. Steve, okay. December 20th, what are we watching? What's it going to be? <laughs> what will we watch today? Love Actually. All right, I love that one. British Christmas. I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that Love Actually is all around. I just love, 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 love Actually. I think it's such a great film. I, I, I mean, I know, I think people don't like it anymore. I feel like I've, I've covered the movie in the past, and when I do, it's usually like, you know, talking about how people don't like it anymore, but I don't know, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I like seeing all these lives intertwine and have connections and... Uh, I don't know, I think a lot of the stories are very sweet. Not all of them come to a, you know, perfect conclusion at the end. Laura Linney, for instance. Um, but, I don't know. I, I like it. I love the score. The score is so good. I don't know. I don't have too much to say about it. I just, I, you know, I've covered it in past videos, but I still really enjoyed the movie. It was very nice to watch, and... Uh, it's an easy watch too, and it has a long runtime, but I uh, I don't think that bothers me at all. So yeah, I love Love Actually. Thank you so much for watching this video. We saw Avatar, we watched Avatar 2, The Way of Water. We watched Love Actually. It was just a, a full day, and Avatar took a lot of it, because that's a very long movie. And this one did too, because it's a long movie. It was a lot of movie watching today. Again, thank you so much for watching, and perhaps I'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.